each one of us hi everybody this is tasha and i'm um, grateful to be here with you today i'm so happy and i want to say thank you for those who have subscribed for the first time and those who have been there with me through i urge you to continue being with me and for those who are coming for the first time please click on the subscribe button and on the notification bell and i also request you as i'll be sharing this most of what I do is what the spirit lays upon my heart and sometimes you might just watch a little bit of it when I'm doing part of the introduction which might not be covering all the content that is in the video. So I would urge you to try and view the video up to the end because there's definitely something that the spirit of God is trying to teach the church at this moment. And Today we are going to be talking about the working of grace. The working of grace, this is a topic that has been of misconception or sometimes people have misunderstood it. Some don't really know what grace is. And particularly grace is divine influence or assistance upon somebody's life. And for us to call it divine, it means it's not from the physical realm, it's from another realm that is coming in to give a certain person help and we, when we term it as divine influence it's majorly associated from the scriptures that I've read so far I realize it's associated with the gift of Christ upon somebody's life so first of all I'm going to refer us to the book of Ephesians 4 7 which says that each one of us we were given grace according to the gift of Christ upon our lives so if we are being given grace according to the gift you understand the gift of Christ upon our life it means the gift that you have particularly belongs to Christ whether you are using it in the secular world or whether you are using it in the Christian world all of us we were gifted at birth we were given certain gifts we have them but the gift that works upon our lives is from the gifts that we have is from God so you find that maybe if uh, I was gifted in performing miracles or maybe prophesying the more I practice this gift the more it I might make mistakes here and there but the more I practice it the more I become more accurate in it so and being accurate it means the grace level increases with time it, the scripture clearly tells us that the grace operates according to the gift of Christ upon our lives. So the gift of Christ has to be at work in you. You must ensure that your gift, the one that you are given, is in operation. Ensure that you are constantly making it to come to life. Not making your gift to die or maybe just living it like that it, you don't live your life like that work upon your gifts and the more you work upon your gift the more the grace of god will continue to be upon your life you've seen certain preachers who are powerful and others who are not that powerful but they have the same kind of i call it gifts it's that this person is in a different level they have worked upon their gift to the certain level which the other person might have not worked upon and the second point is that we are stewards of the grace of god that is working upon our lives which actually comes in various forms in forms i term say i term it as gifts i assume so so if we are stewards of god's grace this particularly tells you that you don't own that grace. You cannot transfer something that is not yours to somebody. That is one thing you have to know because I hear some people saying that I'm going to tap on some man of God's grace or I'm going to get certain grace from somebody. It doesn't work that way. You cannot get a grace that is also been given to take care of. And if it's been given to take care of it, is just a steward of it. It uh, it means that even you as a person, you have a certain grace upon your life. So I don't know why you would live with the grace upon your life if instead of working upon your gift so that your grace may increase, you go and try to get another person's grace. Because that grace operates, the grace that that person has operates only for his gift. 
So it means that when you are going to go out for another person's grace, your own gift will be remaining in, it will be more of not being operated in. And you know the Spirit of God. Definitely such a thing cannot happen. You cannot override His purpose upon your life and go and try to live another person's purpose or try to get another person's grace to operate yet you have the grace that yet placed upon you. So that clearly tells us that we have our own gifts, we have our own grace that has been placed upon us and particularly these gifts were supposed to help in serving other people. That is why when the Spirit of God comes upon somebody's life he comes to do a certain work. He comes to operate in a certain area. Particularly when he's doing a certain work, this work is associated with exalting Jesus or reaching out to people and helping them in a certain area. So the moment you use this gift, not in serving other people, but for your own benefit, the grace that was upon it is being lifted off. That is what happens. So the Spirit of God actually knows this, this gift you are given to serve nations. This gift you are given to, to help the sick if you have the gift of performing, of healing. This gift you are given to do a certain or to draw people to the presence of God. But the moment you misuse it for other agendas apart from helping people, it, st it clearly states, First Peter 4 verse 10, that these gifts were given to us to serve others. So I, I believe you've seen cases where we have servants of God who used to be very well known when they were beginning their ministries. They were powerful. You could hear his performing miracles everywhere and things were like this person was going to be used so well by God. And the moment this person's agenda turned from the way the scripture aligns it or from the way the Spirit of God intended to use this grace, then that is when it was lifted off. So you find this person might still be having this gift, but the grace is not operating. Grace is the divine influence that makes things to work in the physical. So if it is something that you have been doing, you, you find that you are doing it by the grace of God. It was the grace of God in operation. But the moment you, you, you did not cooperate with the grace of God, then it ended up that the grace was lifted off. And no matter how hard you try, you know sometimes people get carried away with several things. You might get into the ministry and then maybe you start getting carried away by money or you might get carried away by just being proud because you feel like you have arrived. There are several things that can make you get carried away. So as believers, we need to be careful. We have grace upon our lives, but make sure you do not lose it due to pride or due to you not using it for the right purposes because he knows your agenda. He knows what your intentions are when you are operating in his grace. Then the next thing that you are going to say is more of like, the, we are also being told that God gives grace to the humble. It means that this grace for you to operate, you have to be humble. It cannot operate in a situation where somebody is full of pride. I'm assuming that maybe when you began, you were willing to see people, you were willing to pray for people in the hospitals, you were willing to go for door to door and serve God. But at this stage, maybe you feel like you have arrived, you've reached a certain level, you cannot see people easily, people have to book appointments and even some go to the extent of ensuring like they only give more attention to people who have money, more money. And the people who have less money, they are like, just bring the person in and they talk to the person, but then they do not give much attention to that. The, the God already knows your heart's intention. He knows that this person's agenda is not that very right when it comes to serving people with this particular grace that are placed upon him or her. So be careful. There are certain things, small things that will make the grace, the grace of God that is operating in your life to be lifted off. So try and remain humble because he lifts the humble. He uses this grace to lift the humble. The next thing that we have to know is 
How does this grace come into place in somebody's life? The grace of God comes upon your life not by you getting to some a servant of God and uh, laying hands on you. That is when that grace of God, it doesn't work that way. The grace of God comes upon somebody's life when they get to know God, when they get to know Jesus. And we talk of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This knowledge is not only reading the Bible. We most of us read the Bible, but maybe you are not operating in that higher grace level in your gift. The knowledge you mean you personally knowing God, you personally relating to Him in person. You know it reaches a point that you get to know God until the things that He does becomes like real. So that when you say something or when you want maybe to declare something over somebody's life so that this person may get healed, it easily operates because you know God. You know, the things of God, if you do not know Him, sometimes it's not easy for you to actually tap into it. So you have to know God. Know God for this grace to operate, not a servant of God. Don't go taking planes, flying all over different countries looking for grace. It doesn't work that way. If you are a pastor in your church and you're seeing that there's a problem with your ministry, you feel like you're called, that this, you have the same ministry as somebody and the other person is operating at a higher level, please, it's not going to tap on that grace that will help you. Get to know God in person. Get to know Jesus Christ in person and things will begin to work. The grace level will increase. The grace level will abound, will go to a much higher level. Now we talk of a case of a disciple called Stephen. This Stephen says clearly that the grace of God, when it had begun in when it had begun operating in his life, he was able to perform wonders, signs, and miracles all over. It means the grace of God was the one doing all this. So just as just as I was saying that God was Stephen was full of grace. We also, the scripture tells us that the grace of God is sufficient for us. Meaning this grace upon our lives to do whatever he had gifted us in. I don't know what your gift is. It doesn't have to be just in the line of ministry. It can be in different areas. Maybe you're gifted in business or other things. Because you, you've seen cases where some people, when they get into business, they really prosper. When others try the same thing, it doesn't work for them. It depends what grace you have and uh, where, to what level is it operating in your life or to what level are you getting divine assistance upon your life. So we need to work by getting to know God. We need to get to know Jesus so that that grace may be in operation in its fullness nature upon our lives. And then the next thing you also have to know is that there's nothing like a grace of prosperity. That does not exist. It's not stated in the Bible anywhere. The scripture clearly tells us that it's God who promotes one. And if it's God who promotes one, know that your gift, the scripture also tells us, it will open doors for you and bring you before great men. So it is your gift that if you work on and if you get to know Christ, the grace of God will be upon your life. You'll be full of grace. And this grace will bring divine influence upon your life this divine influence when people see it when people see how you are operating in this grace then definitely by that time you will be already having that money so money comes in when you operate in the fullness of this grace not like not like you have to go and be prayed for to get the grace of prosperity no it doesn't work that way just work with what you have if you are a singer or an artist you can draw ask for divine backing so that let it be that when you do your work and you place it somewhere it touches the life of people it it ministers to somebody else that is what it's supposed to do and that is how you'll be able to ensure that you operate in the fullness of this grace and and it, it's very much better if you have these gifts, it's better and it's also very much easier if you are operating in the fullness of God's grace. 
it makes your life easier you do not struggle to get through you do not struggle to make your gift be known to people you've seen people who were like yesterday they were nowhere and today they are like somewhere else because god has changed the status just like that overnight it happens in other cases like that in some cases you have to work through it until the point where the grace is in full manifestation and lastly please I have not seen cases where people have fallen out of that grace and then they have been able to capture it again. I don't know whether there are. Maybe there are but I have not known any. So I would just urge you, if you have that grace, you have not fallen out of it, please maintain it with, with, with keenness, be keen and know that if you lose it, it's not easy for you to gain it back because it will be like you've already gone too much into the other direction that God didn't want this grace to operate in to an extent that by the time you're trying to draw back there are a lot of things that will be hindering you so try and maintain your grace be humble and get to know God getting to know God is simple just know him in person and then the last part we have this person called simon the magician i think it's in the book of acts this person when he saw that peter was operating in the gift of god he also wanted to have it and he came and asked them to give him he got baptized but then was asking them was asking if he could pay to get the gift of god which actually did not work for him because you cannot buy the gift of God and his intentions were not good so don't go about buying the gift trying to buy grace from people in the name of you maybe you're paying to get your their, for them to lay their hands on you so that you get a certain grace it will not work for you your intention is not right because maybe you are doing that because you feel like this person's grace is higher than mine it's out of maybe desire to be like them and not desire to use your gift to help other people so the motive behind you asking God to increase your grace should be right and you should not pay for it because it's something that is God given it works within you and thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video